Since the dawn of time, there have been men and women touched by the spark of ingenuity, the flame of creation, propelling mankind ever forward. Now, once again, the time has come when a new discovery, a new invention, a new future has been uncovered. Today, a new era begins from the depths. The era of railed trains. Sometime after I had figured out rails and trains in this game, I went online to see if some others had made some too. I found only a few people who had, but their designs were either wildly inefficient, <laughs> overly complicated, I'm stuck. You're stuck. You're... or they didn't make full use of their idea. He did. So, amidst rumors, I looked elsewhere, but no one was posting blueprints. No one has made any video showing off cool train designs. Indeed, no one seems to be making rail trains at all! And from the depths. This video is going to show how to build one, what the pros and cons are to using them, and some of the game mechanics behind them. It is my hope that we will see some more trains on the Steam Workshop, and hopefully maybe Nick might fix some of the problems that trains experience or even add support for them, as unlikely as that might be. Now, most people seem to be using wheels to make their trains, but I've been making these babies since before Nick even added powered wheels, and here's how. Rubber blocks. See, these magical blocks have enough friction against terrain to stabilize even a towering mecha, but negate collision damage between blocks gently enough like a sponge. They also completely negate friction between blocks, but only in single player for some reason. Why? We just don't know. Seriously, Nick, what's the deal? I want to launch jets from carrier decks with friends. <laughs> Go. Uh... Shit, he was my only friend. Anyway, when a platform sits on a track atop rubber blocks, it basically becomes a puck on an air hockey table. Now, you can make the rail atop either structures or sky fortresses, it doesn't really matter, but you will want to use beams for the rail to minimize block count, and therefore minimize lag. <laughs> So, how did I stumble upon this idea? Anime. No, not that one. Definitely not that one. Yeah, probably that one. Don't watch an anime labeled Boku! Don't do it! The concept of a launch rail should be pretty familiar for sci-fi and anime fans alike. In essence, Big ship launch small ship real fast on magnet stick. See, a long time ago, I was having problems getting AI controlled planes to safely launch from inside their mothership without colliding with the mothership. I thought a launch rail would be perfect to solve that problem. I was wrong. However, this line of thinking led me to develop a space elevator, which is a nice, if crude, way to easily get into orbit, to do all sorts of orbit stuff, like building a death station, or driving Elon Musk's roadster around. Sometime after that, I turned my thinking on its side. Literally. And thus, my first train prototype was born. Now, after experimenting my way through a few different models, I ran into a few problems and came up with a few solutions. And I learned a lot about making trains along the way. 
Now for starters, I learned that you want a minimum of three rails as to minimize enemies shooting chunks of your rail off. And for stability. Indeed, one problem with chains is that if you don't take precautions, recoil or enemy fire can straight up launch you off of the rails. Now, the solution to this problem actually grants the train some of its greatest strengths. Say what? When making the rail, you'll want to keep the spaces in between the rails clear in order to do this next part. But if you weigh down the train just like so, you can significantly diminish the recoil of the guns to the point where you can put as many guns, as big of guns as you want, all over as much as you wish without worrying about recoil or anything really. Furthermore, by adding on evenly distributed weight, you allow the train to power through and keep moving while firing. Albeit with some slowdown, but the thing you need to keep in mind is, the more weight you keep adding, the less slowdown you'll be getting. Now, what's interesting about that, I found out while making this big boy, the heavier you make a train, the faster it goes. See, the weight counters the drag, the air resistance, and because there's no friction due to the rubber blocks, the extra mass that you've added doesn't even slow it down that much. This baby does 80 meters a second about, but you can go much faster with custom jets and proper weight distribution. So, pros. Tons of guns, tons of fast, tons of fun, tons of looks cool, and each ton added makes it stronger. Even in death I still serve. Now for the cons. It's not cost effective or even practical. And if you're trying to win a fight or the campaign, honestly, there's just better things to build for the same amount of cost. But it looks cool. Radical. Uh, it's also really hard to deploy. If uh, you're putting it down as a structure, you better be really sure that it's going in the right way. Otherwise, it'll slide past wherever you want to go. And if it's a Sky Fortress, well, be prepared to wait for a very long time with how slow they move. So they're not easy to deploy like that. And finally, the biggest problem with trains, turning. This is a huge topic in and of itself, and I will cover it as well as the myriad of methods used to make a train turn in another video. But. For now, I'll just say that trains have trouble turning. Anywho, 5 to 3, pros to cons, looks like we need more trains on the Steam Workshop. Say, isn't there a World War II mod campaign? You'd think those guys would be all over this train stuff. Jokes aside, now that you know how, go out and build a better looking rail train than mine and put it up on the Steam Workshop. Good luck building, everybody. I'm sure whatever you guys send in will look nicer than the train I made for this video. Seriously, though. What was I thinking when I made the paint job? Disgusting. What can you even call such a monster? The Spain train? The big Ugandan Bertha? A messy pile of sh- Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. Sorry it took so long. Think it was worth the wait, though? I have some plans to do a few more From the Depths videos showing off obscure, little known, or even just wacky game mechanics and weapon builds. So if you want to see those, stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, by the way, I eventually did get that blimp working. Check it out! Look at that prehistoric video capture. Anyhow, see you later!